Well, thank you everyone for being on our call today. I'm so excited to, uh, to introduce you to Craig Horn. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, Craig is, is, has been a family. He and his family and he and Carly have been probably one of the, one of the best at implementing family ID into their family. And so on this interview, on this podcast, um, I can't wait to just introduce you to, to Craig Horn and have Craig share with you a little bit about his, who he is and where he's from, and, uh, and you're going to love his accent. Hey, Craig, how are you, my man? I'm doing awesome, man. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm sure. excited to be uh, connecting with you a little more. Great. Great. So, Craig, we met about, what was it, 10 years ago? Yeah, a little off, but something around there, getting close, yeah. Okay, okay. So um, we came to Connecticut, where you are an associate pastor, uh, part of the, 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 the pastor leadership team for Walnut Hill Community Church. Is that right? Yeah, I'm the family pastor and part of the leadership team. And uh, the time when we met, my main goal was to, to get families really focusing on them being the primary educators of their kids' faith. That oh, was my task. That's great. That's great. All right. So tell us, tell us where, uh, how you got to Walnut Hill and uh, just kind of give us a little bit of your life history. Yeah, we, we may be here a long time if I went into the full story, <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to keep it, keep it slim. Um, okay. The beautiful accent you hear is not from Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> born and raised in South Africa. Um, born in a Christian family. Uh, amazing mom, amazing dad was able to, to learn about life and, and, and more importantly about Christ and, and how he's the center of everything we do. Um, as I reflect now as a father, um, those were just gold gifts that was given to me by my family. Um, two, two beautiful sisters, got on well with them too. And just, yeah, just very thankful for that, that early upbringing. Um, the great. older I get, the, the more I realize we weren't very wealthy. I'll say we're actually a little bit poor growing up, but I never knew because I was loved so well. Um, you know, um, <laughs> had a father who was brought up um, in a Christian home, but hadn't committed his life to Christ. And yeah, so my, my father was was brought up by a, an amazing Christian mom, um, but he had not chosen Christ as a savior. In fact, he was wild and crazy. I and see. later on in his life, not too late, but in late teens, he gave his life to Christ. Um, <laughs> with my mom was born and raised in the church. Father was a pastor. And uh, I was able to see these two different worlds. Someone who was hungry for the lost outside of the church and oh. someone who was really understanding of what the church's role was was supposed to be I and see. um yeah just was fortunate to, to to be brought up in a home also two beautiful sisters um just a beautiful home life and then i uh, i got a scholarship to come play soccer in the united states at 17 oh. i left home i would say a young boy moving to a different continent new culture knowing no one Right. And I was an adventurous young man, but I was thankful for my upbringing. Uh, I think right. my father and mom had prepared me well for the, for the real world. I see. Um, played soccer at a school in South Carolina. Um, didn't go exactly the way I wanted it, to be honest. Um, I was looking to maybe go professionally after that. Didn't happen. <laughs> right. I went and uh, <laughs> studied and eventually got my degree in marketing management and just started coaching. Started coaching on the side. Really enjoyed it. I and see. they got a job up in Connecticut, moved up to Connecticut for coaching soccer, um, had some great experiences, did a soccer company for 12 years, just teaching kids about, about sport. And I just felt God saying to me, it's time to, to not only teach people about sport and soccer, but, but teach them about me. And that's when I transitioned from the soccer world into uh, the Jesus world, where I was hired by Warner Hill to be a campus pastor. I see. Um, we had five campuses at that time, and, and I was in charge of that. And they did that for five years, really, really good. Kind of cut my teeth a little bit. And then was then asked, and currently now at our main campus in Bethel, to be the family pastor. And that's when we met. That's um, great. But that's a little, little, little eggshell of, of information for you to, great, to work great. on. Okay, so when we met, you, were, you had been married how long? And then how many ch children did you have at that time? Um, so we had met probably about 10 years in, maybe, maybe a little less. At right. three kids, um, I think at that time it was eight, maybe six and four, maybe if I right. remember correctly. That's, that's about right. That's right. You, you I remember that. Remember things I'm trying to remember, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but we'd we'd come to a place where 
um, I, I'd learned some amazing lessons from from my dad about how to how to run household, um, and and just being just with the kids and so on and so forth. But those were lessons were kind of just memory lessons and things I'd seen and learned. And, and I think when when we met, the exciting part for me was I, obviously I was married, um, right. and my wife Carly had her experiences right and. We just needed to find a way to kind of land these good, different, or bad experiences between the two of us and actually find a, a place to, to go together where this information was documented and we not only could be on the same page as, as husband and wife, but bring our kids into that agreement too. And that was where we kind of were just, I will use the word, we weren't waffling, but it just wasn't clear. Good. And I think when we met and when we worked with Family ID, I think there was like, the snap where it was like, okay, we, we have a lot of really cool things that we are doing. We have a lot of really cool ideas of, of where we want right. to go, but let's like actually document this and let's own it. <laughs> That's where I think where, where I got excited meeting you and, and finding more about your, your organization and, um, and eventually brought you twice to Connecticut to our church. That's right. That's right. Um, because I believed in it and still believe in it. Um, and it was really excited to actually Again, document our mission, our vision, our cause, and, yeah, and some of our much. yeah, some of our, our principles. And to be honest, at the time, my oldest was involved in that conversation and kind of was the leader right. as we speak about and, and helped us craft this. And the younger ones morphed into that. Awesome. And in the very early beginnings, it was a very big part of our language. You know what I mean? It was yeah. in everything yeah. we said and everything we did. <laughs> and now as we start getting into the teen years, it's right. less about going through the documents. It's just basically every once in a while, just like, hey. I'll be shining like stars and, and then we can have triggers of healthy patterns and healthy conversations just automatically came, you know? Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you might share what you guys came up with as your core values um, and what you came up with as your vision, uh, your kind of your slogan and your vision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do one step better. I'll, I'll show you what okay. we did. Okay, good, good. Please do. Please do. Oh my goodness. That's great. So, we had a friend that made this for us because we oh, believed okay. in it. And I think last time we saw it, it was written on a chalkboard, which was yes, terrible. It and was. very embarrassing to my wife. <laughs> so I had a friend who's really good at wood, uh, who, who actually put this together. Hey, and yeah. um, can you see me? Yeah, I can see it. Oh, it looks great. And so basically okay. it just says the Horn family. And then we actually got a theme verse you see there. Um, it's right. Philippians 2, 14 to 15. And it's basically talking about shining like stars in a dark world. Um, right. Through the light which we love. Oh, that's great. And then you can see, love God for your heart, soul, and mind. Um, mission, honor all people, forgive always. Uh, and then our identity will be deeply rooted in Christ. We will shine like stars for generations to come. Oh. And then our key words at the bottom, honor, generosity, goodness, joy, and boldness. And basically the last, the words, Yeah. each one of our family represents one of those words. Okay. Really cool. That's see. how we did it. And that's how we remembered those, those, those key words, you know? I so see. this I sits see. above our um, dining room table. Okay. We have breakfast together every morning. Um, we have breakfast and then we do devotional. And I this, see. even though we don't always necessarily read through it every day, right. it's a part of our, our DNA. And in the beginnings, we would recite this. We would talk about it. We would go into the words, what does honor mean? What does generosity mean? Goodness and joy. We would actually communicate these words and, and ask right. them of our kids. You know? Oh, that's um, great. That's great. Yeah, that's that. And now, and that's good. So now that that has become a part of the, the DNA of your family, the way you guys are living it out. Um, and like you said, because once, once they've kind of memorized those words, you don't go over it all the time, no. but it's, it's all in there. It's like, it's, it's, it's all in, in their heart. Right. And, you know, when your children were young, um, you were speaking all of these things into their spirit and, all of us and all of all of our children are their spirits are full grown, but their intellect is not. And Correct. eventually, when their intellect catches up with their spirit, they they will have understanding. And so it's so cool that your your family now it's just a part of them. It's the way it's 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 it has really helped them develop their identity. This is who we are. And yeah, the DNA. I would even not even say identity. It becomes part of the DNA, which is even a deeper. Ooh. a deeper touch you know i mean i look at those yeah. the words so for example honor is, is my word I, I i choose to honor everybody i meet 
<laughs> so my kids see that in me because I've taken it on. It doesn't matter if you are cleaning the street or if you're the prisons of the United States, I will honor you because I believe oh, that's a call. My wife is the generosity. She will give everything she has because she wants to be to be in that space. Um, right. Godliness is something we're asking my son to be a godly man. So how he thinks and how he moves is the way that God's designed him. The joy is my little one. She's full of joy. She's full of life. And then boldness is my oldest is being bold as a woman of God. So like those yeah. words are individual for each kid. And then those words are important for us to hold for ourselves. And it's DNA. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm, DNA. That's, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. Here's what we found. Where, where, where family identity is strong, peer pressure is weak. And where sure. family identity is weak, peer pressure is strong. So have you seen that uh, in your children, how this has given them, this, this family identity has, has uh, translated into them not being that dependent on their peers? Yeah, the interesting thing is, it's, it's, I think you would know this to be true. Sometimes the hardest battles are actually fought inside the house, meaning... Uh -huh. How do I, especially just I mean this past year with COVID, right? You, you, we're at home and we're in everyone's business, right? <laughs> so we're right now fighting for those those core values and that mission to be actually homeward bound. Because to your point, mm. once once you've locked in with family, it's it's for life, right? One of my friends talks about who's going to be at your 65th birthday. It's going to be your family if they're alive, not the friend you have in high school or the person that you thought was cool. It's going to be the person that is blood and that's us so yeah i think for us it, it becomes it becomes to a point where the noise outside is is, is just noise right and i mean the truth that's inside is truth so listen to that so yeah i would agree 100 oh, that's, that's so good that's so good i'm so excited um to to uh, in fact we even shot a video of you yeah we have it in our archives that um i want to make sure that that it's where people can see it and and so forth but um, that that video was really powerful of you and your children sharing uh, your your vision and your mission, and then having everyone uh, yell and 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 say uh, your 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 slogan, your stuff. family yeah. slogan. Shine. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Shine. I think in that video, oh. I think that, uh, I told in that video an amazing story when they were at school and we told uh, their teachers um, <laughs> that we had moved into the space, and if ever they weren't moving in a way that was honoring to them or to the school or to the kids just to, to say to them are they are you shining like a star and that would trigger a response of like no I'm, I'm living outside of that my identity is not being shown and i need to show it and it was massive for us you know it's really really oh, cool that's awesome so yeah. craig how have you seen uh as you as you have as as a family pastor what are what are the big challenges that you see happening in families right now um, and then, uh, of course, your, your, your greatest, what I see God's deep, deep calling on your life is to help parents become the primary disciplers of their children, right? So share, share kind of how God is, has led you in this, in this area of family ministry. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think if we, if we want to be very honest, we, I mean, COVID has, has, has opened up a whole bunch of doors we may not have wanted to open. And what I've been saying lately is, is whatever your relationship or, or lifestyle was going into COVID, it was exasperated, either good or bad, right? So if you came in having struggled with your, with your kid or your wife, mm. I mean, it would be exasperated even more than you had even imagined. So mm. let's say it was healthy. It will still be, you'd still feel the tension because it was just a lot of tension. But if it was healthy, you would work through it. Uh -huh. If it wasn't healthy and the tension came, it, it would slip and it would fall and there'd be, there'd be trouble. I see. So my, my comment outside of that, which I think is very important, is you now have a choice in the midst of that brokenness because there's things that have been revealed to you that you may have been hiding because you were able to escape, right? right. If you aren't prepared to deal with those things now, when COVID comes to its end, all right, you're going to carry out how you ended out of that, out of that season. So, uh, so my big conversation now with this is with families, it's okay. Identify the places where you've struggled. Identify the places that were cracks and now becoming even in crevices and deal with them. Don't hide or run from them. Like use this opportunity as actually a blessing to maybe you thought things were great and they weren't and you've convinced yourself otherwise. And now you're really feeling the strain of it. Mm -hmm. Identify it, dig into it, clean it up because when it comes to the new normal or when we go right. to a new place, Hmm. springboard from there springboard out of it versus staying in the brokenness i don't know if that makes any sense but that's what i've been yes, seeing and that's yes, what i've been yes. asking of our families I, I i actually think it's it's been a season where honest questions have to be asked because there's no hiding the uh -huh. hiding is your is your house and that is your home and if you're hiding in your home then 
you're living a lie, right? right and right. it's okay right. to, to find that out. I think it's That's... better to find that out now mm. and don't be scared of it. Be honest with it. Look in the mirror and go, listen, that was actually a mess that it's been covered and I need to work on it and, and, and be, be intentional. And I think that goes back to, to the family idea. Like when we look at our board, those things were questioned of us. Are we honoring our own family mm. in the midst of this? Wow. Because if we don't do that, we, we're not going to be doing it outside. You know what I mean? Are right. we being generous to each other with our words, with our deeds? Uh-huh. You know what yeah. I mean? Are we shining that's like true. godly men and women? So I think that's the piece that I think is actually a okay. gift that was given that people didn't realize. Um, it was an exposure maybe in places we were hiding. And, and now that you know that, don't that's continue good. to hide. That's so Address good. it, develop in it, and then springboard out of it. Yeah. You know, what I love about um, the fact that you guys have really made your family vision and mission and values a just a part of your DNA is um, that you really do evaluate your life uh, with that from time to time. You may not do it consciously sure. every day, but how cool it is just, he- let it, just hearing you share uh, that you, you evaluate your family and its, and its health your family relationship health based on those five things. And it's so yeah. cool. It's so cool. Now, to I think that's important. Like that. I think that's the piece that I love too, is because remember I said in the beginning, we were kind of had these good ideas and these good plans. It's hard to hold people accountable if there's nothing there. You know what I mean? And now that there's something there, we can be honest with what's there. We agreed on these. We're going to own these. Are we doing it? And I think, I think in one of your speeches, you talk about like, if there's no vision, the, the people will perish, right? right? Beautiful statement. And I think when you can own that and actually scale it down to a place where it has actual practical implications where you can say, hey, I thought we we're trying to honor each other and now we are. That's on us. Yeah. That's on us. You know what I mean? Uh, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's be honest. And then, but if you've written nothing and you've just said, we're a family that does this one time and does that one time, they're all, they're all great things. Right. But how do, you, how do you ground them? And that's the point. This is the, the point of the family idea for me is like, just go look at the sign. <laughs> read it it's on the wall doing those things you know what i mean that's right. it was that's funny right. we, were, we were one time we were driving to this party it was actually a little while ago it wasn't that long ago and uh and i just went back and i said the kids are you shining like stars are you ready to shine like a star as we go into this party and they're like dad that's not cool to say anymore i said well tell me what's cool tell me tell me tell me the, the word that we can use that's going to trigger if this isn't because now they're old right they, that's, they, they, that's good i like it so i like, like it. So i said what what are we going to say and then in the background, they were throwing out different things like be, be a superstar, star up. Oh, you know I mean? see, I see, I see. And I didn't care. I wasn't fixed <laughs> no, on like, no kidding. Shine, no kidding. Star up. <laughs> and they were fighting about like, no, we want to be those things, but it doesn't sound cool. I said, okay, give me the word. So we came up with a couple of buzzwords, but it was the exact same stuff, which is really I cool. Love which it. Means I love it. They loved the concept, mm. but maybe the, 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 the wording we used was outdated, you know? Oh, that's good. That's I, I, love, I love that because, you know, if you think about it in the business world, how many companies have ha- have changed their slogan over the years? You know, um, Coca-Cola is one that I, I can think of, you know, for, for a long time, the co- the slogan was, it's a, it, it's the real thing. Coke, Coke is right. Yeah. Um, and then it's, they had, they have to change it. You have to change um, over time your slogan to make it more to make it relevant just like right. to make it cool right yeah because when your kids are little so so your oldest daughter let's say how old is your oldest daughter 14 okay so that would have been when she was uh probably what seven or eight so yeah. it been 10 years ago yeah so it's- she was actually in the class you know what i mean okay okay yes okay so she was eight in the class so we we have people in the class uh if they can read they can attend yeah. uh, eight, eight, nine, ten, kind of area seven, eight, nine. But um, all right, so so she, she had, had her own book. She still has the book. She was underlined the things she wanted to underline. Like it was all in. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. yeah. I love it. Isn't that great that kids get excited about that um, and and are and, and love and are, and feel like, feel like their their voice is being heard when they're included in this process with their parents. Uh, Man. Awesome. Okay, so one of the big points that we cover in the in the workshop is um, uh, getting our children to treat each other better than their best friends. So how have you seen the sibling relationships in your family as compared to what a normal family or kind of the way you grew up with your sisters? Uh, because you, you're, you're, you grew up in a family with two, you were the only boy and, yeah. and two sisters 
and you've got the same. You've got two girls and one boy, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So how have you seen the sibling relationship uh, piece of, of your of your family since, yeah. since you did the workshop? So one of the things I found interesting when we did the workshop, we, there's actually very few good examples of um, families and, and brothers and sisters in the Bible. I didn't realize that. I mean, we, I, I realized there were some terrible ones, meaning like, I mean, Kenny and Abel, nightmare, right? People are killing each other, spectacular. But I would just assume there were more good examples. There's very few. Hmm. So we understand from the beginning of time, there's a pressure on, 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 on this, 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 this relationship. So hmm. we know it's of importance to God and we know it's obviously the enemy wants to destroy it. So yeah. I'll be honest in my statement here, and I, I, that's just how I roll. Right. We have really had to work hard on that. Because our, our kids don't love that statement. They don't love it. But we, we push that statement a little further and saying, um, if, if you can't be in that space that we're talking about being kinder to your, your sibling, to your friend, then you're not going to hang out with your friend. You're not wow. going to hang out with a friend. Now, that doesn't mean that that changed instantaneously. They just mean there's certain times where they just aren't hanging out with their friends. And, and, and that becomes like the, the, the fighting point where, I will say for me, I, I won't stop fighting for that statement mm. because naturally mm. the internal beings of who you are often in, in a, fun, a family dynamic mm. is fighting against that. So mm. I have seen improvement, don't get me wrong, but this is, I don't want to just talk about it being bliss because it's not. Sometimes we have some really good dingers, you know what I mean? Uh, but <laughs> I, I will love always it. I say love that it. I will fight for what is right versus giving mm. up what is wrong. You know, And I think that's the piece where there's been many a day when they haven't hung out with their friends because they couldn't treat their own sibling well. Um, mm. And that's going to be, I think, in our family, just something we hang on to. And mm. again, <laughs> it's one of those pieces that I believe in enough to, to, to have a consequence big enough where they have to learn it's pretty hard. Oh, that's so good. I'm so excited about that. And just to see that, that you have, because you're being intentional it, with your children in this area of sibling relationships, when you know, when, when, so how, how was it when you were growing up? Kind of what was the, how did, what was the dynamic in this, in, in your sibling relationships growing up? Yeah, mine was probably not the best to use because they, they started off calling me the, um, the golden <laughs> child. I see. All right. I was the youngest, I was the boy. I think okay. we rephrased that language to, um, we rephrased the language to golden boy. Sorry, I, see. Over here. I see. I see. <laughs> We went to Golden Boy, which was better, all right? Um, I think it was a little biased, but I mean, I can't tell them how to behave. But I, I remember just certain things like, I remember one time me and my sister were getting in an argument and I think I, I hit my sister, like, I think it was the coat hanger or something silly. Right. And my dad came in, he's like, that's just not going to happen. You, you are not allowed to lay a finger on your, on, your, on your sister. And I remember my sister like dancing behind me laughing and he was just like, and you can't carry on like that either. You know what I mean? It was just, it was just not acceptable. You know what I mean? I see. I see. And what I, what I came to learn even with my own family is that I believe that the Lord gives like our kids gifts. Like for example, my son is a protector. I see. And when he isn't following the Lord, he can actually be a bully. Meaning that the enemy, enemy likes to flip out our gifts. My oldest is very, very kind. And when she's not following the Lord, she's, doesn't use kindness in, in her artillery and and my, my little one is just so cool to be around when she's she's a presence and a grace around her that when she's with the lord you just you just can't help yourself but when she isn't you're like whoa, whoa, whoa you gotta leave you know what i mean so it's interesting to me as i look through my childhood and i see the different things that my sisters had right. in, in their core and who they are and when they weren't being that meaning they weren't spending time with lord they would revert to to places that god hadn't designed them and they would behave that way mm. and that's where the tension would come so it was a really easy signal for us as it was my dad saying, you're not being who you credit to be right now. Right. Like, stop I, it. You know, so, so you can call that out. It's like, <clears throat> it's like the core values. You can call it out like, listen, we've told yeah. you that you're a protector mm. and now you're being a bully. So stop. Oh, no. That's not of God. So I think for me, I learned that in my mm. home. Um, again, I was, I was the youngest. I was a boy. Mm. Um, there was probably a little, a little more, I would say with a jealousy, he's getting everything. Right. But right. when I was behaving maybe selfish, right. then that would be me not being generous. And, and we, would, we would really call those things out. And I think sometimes I think. parents are trying to be their kids' best friends. Uh, and it's just not how, we, how we're supposed to be doing that. You know, it's funny. Right. We just got a dog yesterday, which is probably the <laughs> maddest you're hearing around in the house. And my, my oldest is looking after the dog. And one of the things that they said is if the first, first day you, you sleep next to the dog in your bed, 
And she said, the dog tried to keep on jumping onto the bed and I had to keep on pushing it off. And I'm worried that the dog's not gonna love me. And I said to her, listen, there's many times as a parent, I've pushed you off things because you haven't behaving well. Do you love me? She said, oh yeah, I love you. I said, boundaries and talking about discipline isn't us not loving, it's actually showing love. So it was a nice little moment we had there. Oh my God, that is so good, Greg. Yeah, that's cool. That is so good. You know, we, we also, uh, one of the things that we, we were sharing about uh, sibling relationships is that it's the training ground for marriage. So I know you, you as a pastor have seen lots of families. You've seen lots of family conflicts, lots of conflicts in marriage. So how, how have you seen that? Um, just the, the way, the way, um, the way we treat our sibling. Um, and, and then I'm really also curious about how you gave your children these really awesome names like protector, uh, yeah. and yeah. So how, how did you do that? Yeah, so I definitely believe, like, I mean, even just speaking to my son, he's getting to an age now where, where women are starting to be on his radar and just talking about the idea, like, things are going to pass your screens, like pornography and I inappropriate see. pictures. Assume that there's a, a father there who's that's their daughter. Assume uh, that that's a mother. Assume and, mm. and fight against that. Fight uh, for what is right. That's be good. a protector in that space. And so the protector piece is i believe as a father our, one of our jobs is to be a provider protector and promoter of of, of, our, of our kids so taking right. one of those words out of the first step of the of the puzzle i got it saying start this place you know what i mean oh, that's good um, and so then good. The, the 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 part for our, our eldest in regards to being kind is that when she's at her best she's she's kind and we identify that like there's something about it as a glow and when she's around people and that that transfers is, is made the wow. person who she's talking to is just released into a different space right mm. and my youngest when she walks into a room and people are like oh wow you're so awesome you know what i mean so we, <laughs> we identify those pieces but also we love their names so I my son's it. name is keen which is um steadfast um, um so that's that's who he is be, be steadfast and strong be, be that protector um uh, full it. of life full of praise is, is ava which is being kind and right. sky is is, is is beautiful one you know what i mean just, oh, just yeah. be that one. so like a mixture of names and a mixture of just watching and identifying core values yeah. and then just calling those things out and saying mm. when you're at your best you are this when you're not at your best it's that and you have to start recognizing the difference between the two mm. and and how yeah. you treat your sister will be how you treat your wife so mm. start mm. learning that language start learning that that posture start learning keep your hands off you know what i mean start learning like hey when you do that the consequence is this um so yeah i think i think for me it's the it's it's really we're really working hard in our home with those things and and here's the beauty of it when we go out the house there's impact mm. when we go to restaurants or, we, or they stay at people's houses and they stay yeah. because we fight hard in, at home for what is right that's you know what good. I mean? That's good. And we don't always get it right at home, but that's the True. that's the the, the 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 breeding ground. That's the, that's the, the place where we we are learning and we're yes. growing and, and cutting our teeth, and that's the place where we're being honest and being vulnerable and we are talking. That's and good. And we have we have that expression outside of the house because of the work that's done in the house. You know, yeah. and so I true. think I think yeah, the the, the, the civil the rivalry is it's always a part of family, right. and sometimes it's beautiful, which we <laughs> which we which we really love to see, and sometimes it's ugly. But right. in the ugliness, we want to have conversation because that's yeah. what we want to develop. That's what we want to learn. And I think many times we're really excited about the product, but God's right. actually excited about the process. And being honest to the process is, is, is what I'm all in about because that's good. I go at one stage, is, I said to my daughter, she's 14. And I said to her, just think about this. In three years, you'd be 17. Right. That's when I left my country. Wow. That's when I went across the world, knowing no one, and started a new life. Are you ready? <laughs> you know, she freaked out, right? And I think, like I said, my job is to get you ready. Oh. So this is why we're investing in you now. And this is why we're making these hard conversations right. um, a part of our conversation, and that we Indeed. continue to talk. I mean, we talk at the table. It's the place yeah. that where we, we want to be having those conversations, and then it reaches to all, all places of our life. So I think, mm. I mean, that's a long-winded answer to your question, but this stuff is all kind of intermingled together, you know? Yeah. Yes, it is. In fact, I think something that our that our listeners would be really excited about would would be, um, you know, you as a pastor um, are working really hard, and and it's like us us in the ministry, uh, it's like we're somewhat in a fishbowl, and uh, it's like everybody can see inside our 
our life. And um, so how, how do you, how do you deal with that when, when it comes to just uh, trying to be as authentic and as real as you can uh, and yet, and yet not, not be a poser, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's what I have a tendency to do. I intend to be a poser. (laughs) I think that's a great question. I mean, I have been, I'm a very honest and vulnerable guy. Um, I have to shoot straight. Uh, I have told my kids and numerous times and my wife, if there's any a time you see me saying something on stage around people that I'm not saying at home, call me out. Mm-hmm. Call me out. Um, when I when I am when I'm working through something like when I say I'm preparing a sermon, and right. there's pieces there that I speak about that I'm not honestly communicating at home, call me out. If there's a day and there's been a day where my wife would say, "Listen, today isn't going well. What's up? Have you done your quiet time?" And I'd be like, "No, nah, fair enough. I haven't, or I've sped through it, or I haven't." I'm very okay with that. Mm. And I think that that piece is important. We have to ask those tough questions. So for me, yeah. I'll give an example of that. I mean, <laughs> I have this saying that not everybody loves, but I'll say it to you and I'll tell it to my kids. And you have to listen to all three parts of it for it to be understood because it sounds quite arrogant, but that's not what I want it to be. Okay. I, I do not care what other people think of me. Mm-hmm. I do my best for them not to think ill of me because mm. I know who I've been created to be. Mm. Wow. And I, I so love those that. three pieces on their own don't stand well, but together they, they create a space. I, mm. I, I don't care what people think of me. I think what God thinks of me. Mm. And that's the second one, because that's what I, that's what, if, if I'm doing something that's against God, it's probably against that person too. Uh-huh. And then I know that I'm, I'm looking to please only God. So I, I dust that stuff off very that's easily. So good. From me. It's that's not something so I'm doing. I remember a funny thing. I was at church and one of my kids were running around without their shoes on. And a lady <laughs> came up to me and he said, do you see what your kid's doing? I said, no, tell me what they're doing. He said, they're running around the church with no shoes on. Yeah. And I said, okay. I said, when do you normally not wear shoes? And she said to me, when I'm at home. I said, well, I'm glad they feel like they're at home. <laughs> and for me. That's great. That's great. I, I, oh. I'm not spending time in, in the weeds with people's. I say this <laughs> to my kids. I don't spend the time in, other, in the shadows of other people's trees. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm going to live my life for God and, if Amen. people have issue with my kid or my family, I'm open to conversation. And if it doesn't resonate between me and God, I'm going to dust it off. That's so good. My kids are very honest. I, after, I mean, they are very honest. When I've spoken, I come back and I'll say, hey, how do you think? And they would be like, oh, a little boring, a little long. That was funny. That was good. Hey, Dad, you're not doing that. You said you were. So I just, we just go for it. You know what I mean? Oh, I love it. I love it. Craig, that is so powerful, man, that, that you have asked. Uh, you've been able to be vulnerable with your family. And, and invite them. I think that's something very um, attractive to a teenager um, is for, a, for dad to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm willing for you to call me out. Uh, if you don't see me uh, walking the walk, if all you hear me is doing the talk and I don't walk it out, then I'm, then I'm, I'm, I'm actually, um, I, need, I need your input. I need you to call me out on that. Oh, yeah. dude, that's an attractive thing that you can do uh, to cause your teenager to, to really want to be engaged. Um, so dude, Craig, I'm so proud of you, man. I've just, you, 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 uh, you have, I've never met a family pastor like you. And I've met many, many across the nation that has really, um, that has really lived out this authentic life and, and you're doing it at home. Uh, so I just want to commend you that, that your, your faith works at home first. Uh, and then, as an overflow of your faith at home, um, uh, it, 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 you're able to minister to all the families at Walnut Hill. So, man, Craig, thank you for being on our... our, our uh, Can I give you one last nugget? Can I give you Please one do. last nugget? Right, I need yeah. two more. If you got, no, you got I'll two. I'll two. I'll say okay. the first one. The first okay. one is, you, if you ask my wife and my kids, they will tell you that I get it wrong often. Okay? okay. That's great. But what they will also tell you is, I'll be the first to apologize. Uh, I, 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 I have learned enough to know that that mm, is mm. so important. Um, oh and, and, and that's, that's, that's really a gold nugget. The other thing Please is God. I'm not going to self promote, but I, I've written a book about the story. I've written a book. Uh, it's called the, uh, the white African. And it speaks a lot about these stories of, uh, of how God, unless you actively bring him into not only your family, but all parts of your life, your school, your, your oh, work, your relationships, that you're gonna you're gonna be lost, confused, and and not have a personal peace. So, uh, those are the two pieces for me that are that are close. One, it. say I sorry, you're gonna get it wrong. And two, I would say write, start journaling. 
mm. the things that God has said, promised, mm. and what you want. And, and do oh, it for yourself. Good. Don't do it for anybody else. That is so good. That is so good. You know, Craig, um, I was just going to tell you, thank you for that, that powerful word, because uh, they did a survey among teenagers and asked them, if you could change anything about your dad, what would it be? And they, they gave two, two, uh, two answers were the number two, number one and number two. If he, if he wouldn't just, if my dad would, if I could change anything about my dad, number one, would it, it, that he would not get so angry. And second, uh, that my dad would just admit when he was wrong. Those were the two things. And I, I see that, boy, you talk about something that, that can build relationship. When relationship is broken in our family, a uh, relationship is broken with our son or daughter. Um, when we've, uh, the, 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 way to, the way to correct that, the way to fix that is to simply say, I was wrong. Yeah. Would you please forgive me? Uh, and being, and man, to hear, to hear you say, that you're quick, you're quick to say, they would say that, yeah, dad is quick to say I was wrong. Uh, would you please forgive me, dude, you're, you're laying a foundation for many godly generations. And uh, man, thank you so much for, for that. Thank you for being such a great family ID family. Uh, we're so proud of you and uh, thankful for, in fact, I want, I want our, I want all of our listeners to get a copy of your book, The White African. Uh, sh show that again, so they can because uh, it's not spelled exactly the same. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's on great. Amazon. You can see it there. It's, oh, uh, okay. Uh, who became who became an African American? I love yeah. it. Yeah, I love it, Craig. Bless you, my man. Okay, Thanks for the time, Greg. Thanks for oh. starting this journey off and allowing us to document and uh, to move moving. So, God bless you, brother. Thank you, buddy. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Sure. Thanks. Bye. Man. Bye. <laughs>